Good morning, and welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Come on in. I'm Hal Corpenning, the senior minister here at Plymouth, and I'm glad that you've chosen to spend your Sunday morning in worship with us. Come along here. Here at Plymouth, we like to say no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here at Plymouth. You may be in Europe, you may be in Asia, you may be someplace else in the US, but no matter where you are, we're really glad that you're here as part of our worshiping community this morning. If you're looking for a bulletin, you can find one online on our website at PlymouthUCC.org slash bulletin. I hope that your experience this morning is spirit filled and I hope that you're able to connect with the spirit of the holy as we worship God together. Welcome to Plymouth. Good morning, and welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church. We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and glad that you're joining us here this morning for worship on this absolutely gorgeous late spring day. Things are blooming. It's lovely out there. Um, a special welcome to those of you uh, either online or here in the sanctuary who are joining us for the first time. It's great to have you with us. We're always thrilled to have guests in our midst. Um, speaking of which, our new members class is happening today at noon, and it'll be out in the fireside room down in the West Forum room. Thank you. Down in the West Wing. I, I, I do know my way around the building after 20 years. Maybe. <laughs> Um, and also a special word of thanks to those of you who helped out with uh, the visit of John Philip Newell last Wednesday evening. It was a great occasion 
Um, and if you missed it and you'd like to see it, it's now on our YouTube page. Um, so you're welcome to tune into that. The, uh, the interview portion with John Philip is, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes long. Um, so you're welcome to tune in to that and also to hear some great music. We, we uh, included that live, uh, which is unusual for, for John Philip to have a congregation that's willing to actually sing some of his chants. But we do that every week anyway with our Lord's Prayer. So, so I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths and feel yourself in this place or at home grounded in God's good earth. And let us find a quiet center as we prepare to worship God together. Will all who are able please rise and join in the call to worship? Gather round now, old and young, all persuasions, all people. From the west and east, from the north and south, we come. Come to praise, to mourn, to wonder, to renew, to learn. We come to hear the good news of God. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Will you please join with me in the unison prayer? In the wake of resurrection, risen one, we come together to discover again who you are and who we are as an Easter people. We come to wonder and to deepen, to be still and to move with your spirit. Open us to the truth that sets us free, to the compassion that connects us, and to the faith that enlivens us. Amen. Do we have some children here, preschool through fifth grade, that would like to come and join me? Ah, here comes Ryan. Come on up. Thanks for being here. You are representing well for your age group. Why don't we sit right up here? So, I have a couple of small stories today and something to show you. 
So I'm remembering a story about a little girl that wanted to make something, draw a special picture for her grandparents, and drew a heart, and it wasn't right. So what do you think she did? I think she maybe took out an eraser, something like this, and erased it, yeah? And then drew it again, and it still wasn't right, and so tried to erase it again. And then sometimes, you know, I don't know if you know this, Ryan, but, you know, if you use, like, colored pencils, like this pink one, they don't erase very well, do they? Yeah. And so she tried again, and it still didn't work. And she erased so many times, it made a hole in the paper. Have you ever done that? Yeah, me too, <laughs> me too. Oh, she burst into tears, and she said to her mom, it's not working, it's not working right. And her mom said, let's do it together and see what happens. And I remember a story about a little boy, and this will be for some of the older students out here. And he was about, I don't know, second or third grade, and he had to make a graph. Do you know what a graph is? A graph is, well, it's part of math. And so, you know, you have to, you have to make lines like this and lines like this and then put information in there. And it's part of doing math. And you'll learn about that in, in, when you get older in, in math. And he got so frustrated, he threw down his pencil and threw down the ruler because it seemed that no matter how many times he tried to make a graph, the lines, instead of going straight like I had them, they would go like this and this, and he just couldn't get the lines right. They'd be all crookedy. <coughs> and he said, I know how to do graphs, I just can't draw one. Then he burst into tears. And I, I happen to know this little boy really well, and so I said to him, Let's do it together. I know how to draw a heart, so you do it like this, right? Yeah. Like this. You are exactly right. That's how you draw a heart on, on a card for your grandparents, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we mess up. We make mistakes. Even if we kind of know how to do something, we might make a mistake. And we might erase too many times and have a big smudge on our paper. Or we might not be able to draw a graph it was straight lines, even though we know we have to do that for our homework. And we get someone to help us, don't we? Yeah. Well, you know, God's a lot like that. God helps us make things new and better. God works with us in our hearts, in our minds, through our hands, through other people, to help us do the things we want to do in the world, to make the world a better place, to give gifts to one another, to figure out problems like graphs. And we're going to hear in just a moment, Pastor JT read a scripture about how God helps the people make things new. So whenever you see an eraser, you can think about, oh yeah, God helps make things new. Let's pray. Holy One, I thank you for Ryan who came up here to share stories with me. I thank you for all of our children. I thank you that you come, God, to help us make things new. Amen. Thanks, Ryan. You may go back to your seat. One of the other... Ooh, I'm really loud. <laughs> I mean, not just normally, but with a microphone too. Um, today is a special day in the life of our congregation because we're honoring our graduates and both of our high school graduates are here this morning, which is awesome. There's a lovely little insert uh, in your bulletin and Hannah Martin and um, Lily Morrison, both are graduating or have graduated. Has that happened yet next week? Yeah, um, congratulations to both of you. And we have another graduate as well, uh, whom a lot of you know. Amy Welsh is graduating this weekend um, with a master's degree in violin performance and teaching. Um, 
Oftentimes you'll hear Amy in our services when she's back here in Fort Collins, and I noticed on her Facebook uh, post she said she's planning to head back here um, for the summer and hopefully into a teaching position. So um, congratulations to all of, all of them. Uh, we lift you up in our prayers. A couple of other prayers um, have come in this morning. Um, Jim Poole asks that we pray for um, family and friends of Robert McFarlane, a friend of his who died last week, and also John Henry Fitch, who died last month. God of compassion. Carl and Nancy Hain offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Their dog, Rocky, ran away on Wednesday night. And truly, it takes a village um, and also bacon and hot dogs and a dog behaviorist. Rocky, <laughs> Rocky is home safe, so we give thanks for that. God of compassion. And uh, JT lifts up a prayer for a former colleague in ministry in Denver, uh, and for the ministry of Pilgrim St. Luke's UCC in Buffalo, New York. God of compassion. And I would also ask us to not only to grieve one more mass shooting in this country, but let's try to do something about it. Um, it's epidemic. And it's time for all of us to say enough is enough. So let's take these prayers and those that we may be feeling stirring in our hearts and lift those up to God in the spirit of silence.
Thank you for that beautiful prayer. I want you to know that in the retreat that I helped lead in the Netherlands this past few days, this last week, we sang that every day. So what a gift. Thank you to the many who bring that here and brought that to me and was appreciated by that group. A reading from our tradition. This is from chapter 21 of the Revelation that came to John. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a wedding partner adorned for the wedding. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's peoples. And the Holy One will be with them. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See. I am making all things new. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Mm. It's a beautiful vision, this chapter 21 part of the Revelation. I felt touched by reading that. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Beautiful on such a morning with the news as it is. So when things are tough, how do we know it's going to turn out? How do we stay the course and keep hope? When problems seem so large, how do we keep going? When you are young and wondering how to find your place and deal with the big world, how do you keep confidence and seek direction? When you are old and life is short, where do you look for meaning and possibility? These might be some of the questions we bring to the text this morning, to our lives. This year I'll turn 59 I've done the math more than once. (laughs) Comes out the same. It might sound young to some and old to others, but it sure makes me reflect on more than a half a century of living. Highs and lows, mistakes and learning, growth and gratitude. Yet in all my years, I've never seen a couple of years like our last two. What about you? We've had a new worldwide pandemic. The old pandemic of racism has been unveiled anew to many. The increasing effects of climate change seen in hurricanes and wildfires. Armed white vigilantes in the streets and the Capitol, even in a grocery store. But if you think the last couple of years have been tough to view, it can't compete with the biblical vision we know as the revelation received by the anonymous author we refer to as John. John's vision has beasts, a sea monster, plagues, horses of multiple colors, the archangel Michael fighting a red dragon. Did you know there were dragons in scripture? A giant pit, a pregnant woman, and a day of God's wrath. It's quite a picture. Likely in a trance or a non-ordinary state of consciousness, John saw and recorded this vision. It is not for the faint of heart, nor is it for simple, literal interpretation. A lot of us hardly know what to do with it. But there is, let's just say it, a lot of lousy interpretation out there that claims the revelation of John as its 
verification, end of the world stuff, predicting dates and events and such. It's generally poor Bible analysis and bad theology. So the revelation and all such are best approached with humility. And in this case, a good understanding of Hebrew symbols and Hebrew prophecy. And seen this way, seen this way, revelation can become what it was for the people of John's time and for many Christians over the centuries. An inspiring, encouraging vision that helped them in bad times to keep going to faithfully resist empire and the false gods of society. Indeed, the revelation received by John was an underdog story that served them as they faced tough challenges and big questions of history and of their lives. Now, as the last book of the Bible, it's important to remember, it's a kind of symbolic end, and not necessarily in the sense of time ending, but of purpose might call it the telos, the end toward which we travel, the meaning of history and life, of that which is symbolic of that time. We know that John was referring to the Roman Empire when referring to the beast and the antichrist presence in that vision. The Pax Romana, the dominating peace of Rome, that way of empire was not the peace of Christ. John knew that. The early Christians knew that. So those early followers and communities of Christ were called to live differently, to resist the way of Caesar and choose the way of Jesus. But when Rome is so big, when the system seems so pervasive, or even when life takes an unexpected and unwelcome term, how do you deal with that? Well, many of the faithful looked to the revelation of John as an alternative vision of what ultimate power was at play and trusted in that divine power. And through this story, they rejected the conventional menu of what was inevitable and cultivated an alternative consciousness of what was possible. And in this, they found hope. Hebrew scholars like Walter Brueggemann And theologians like the late, great James Cone will tell you that Pharaoh and Caesar's greatest power is the belief in in their ultimate power and the limitation of possibility to change the status quo. If they can just keep the spell going, they stay in power. There's nothing new in the empire. That's part of the power of empire. There is no different future, only anxiety about a potentially different future. As Brueggemann would say, God here is not free, but controlled in a box. So maybe that is the genius of the medieval Dominican mystic, Meister Eckhart, when he wrote so many centuries ago, God is the newest thing there is. The youngest thing there is. God is the beginning, and if we are united to God, we become new again. Does that sound strange? God is the newest thing? Maybe being part of a historic Protestant denomination that's part of other threads and denominations of centuries and Maybe it's being a congregation with an institutional history and a solid brick building that makes it harder for us to know God who is always new. Maybe we relate more to God as a fixed external absolute, something like the ancient of days. Or maybe we can attribute it to the repeated habits of heritage. Well, like the new births that do come to our congregation and other communities, God comes. God comes too. But not just as the birther, as the mother, though that's also true. But as the new birth itself, as the new itself. 
And new in the revelation means different. Did you hear it in the scripture passage that was read? Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. John said. And let me be clear though, both for those of the first centuries of the ancient Near East and for us, the new heaven and the new earth have not come, not fully anyway. This morning's news from Buffalo and many morning's news tell us that. Pharaoh, Caesar, demonic, conscious, and unconscious Systems of domination still have power. And they take root in human souls such that violence against another person or group or country become a kind of siren song, a tragic temptation, an illusion of solution. If only we or I could just get rid of or control this other. Projecting inner tensions and fears and insecurities onto the other and making them an enemy. A dehumanized object is as old as Cain and Abel and at the core of what keeps humanity alienated in conflict and out of step with divine love. So the revelation of John is not without its own troubling aspects, yet Ultimately, it tells a new alternative story where empire is not the last word, nor the only possibility. Connecting with that divine alternative vision is the beginning of liberation for us all. Through song, ritual, prayers, or art, we can uplift this liberating story, this story of reversal where empire is not ultimate or final. We can connect to the power of the story of a new heaven and a new earth. We can anticipate its full coming by tasting and expressing and living it now. We can participate in its emergence now. We can live the new Now and in so doing, allow its call to stay rooted in us and sustain us in the long arc of history. Where, yes, sometimes we have to say over and over again, never again. For those being crushed and exploited by the empire, whether the oppressive empires of history or the inner oppressions of the wounded soul, Good news comes when a new vision of possibility is made visible and like communion taken in, even if only in part. When this taste of inner liberation comes, hope comes, affirmation comes and fortifies the spirit for endurance and for liberating action. As Choctaw Nation music artist Red Eagle raps in his song, Still Here, Wounded Knee, and We Still Here, Sand Creek, and We Still Here, Cortez, and We Still Here, Slavery, and We Still Here, Smallpox, and We Still Here, Border Schools, and We Still Here. Damn, it feels good to be a native. Damn, it feels good to be a native. He speaks these words for the people who need to hear it. Like John's revelation, an alternative story that says yes to the people who need that yes, that alternative. Good news comes to those who hear and trust the God who says, see, I am making all things new even in the midst of empire, injustice, and violence. It comes when we truly hear Jesus say, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. It comes when you know that even 
if in the short term of history it looks like the forces of death and oppression are winning, you still know, we still know the story of the resurrected one who came in a lowly stable, lived with, taught, and healed the lowly ones, and who, dying with the lowly ones, conquered even the power of death. So my friends, as we continue in the resonance of Easter, our sacred image of John's revelation reminds us that as we arrive together in the end, in a new heaven and a new earth, we can celebrate this Easter vision for all people and for all creation. In the words of Lila June, who's a Navajo Nation artist, in her song, All Nations Rise, this time it isn't Indians versus cowboys, no. This time it is all the beautiful races of humanity together on the same side, and we are fighting to replace our fear with love. This time bullets, arrows, and cannonballs won't save us. The only weapons that are useful in this battle are the weapons of truth, faith, and compassion. That's a nice summary. Truth, faith, and compassion to the alternative way of Jesus. It's cultivating and living in these ways. Cultivating these ways. That's how we participate in the coming of this Easter vision for all. God's beloved community, the new heaven and the new earth. This is what we do to be an Easter people amidst times such as these. This is what we do to allow God to dwell with mortals. Emmanuel. And finally, just a brief word for our graduates. It's a word from Sister Elia Delio, a sister of St. Francis and a professor at Georgetown University, who says, God is always new. Life is always new. Every end is a new beginning and every arrival a new departure. There are no dead ends in life unless we ourselves die in despair. And for you graduates, I simply say, do not despair. But have faith in the God who says, see, I am making all things new. Amen. Here at Plymouth, we practice open communion, so if you're here with us this morning, you too are welcome at Christ's table. One of our deacons will invite you forward and down the center aisle, and you can leave your Sunday offering in either of the two wooden offering plates on the communion table. This month, our uh, Share the Plate recipient is Food Bank for Larimer County, so half of all the undesignated gifts that come in through the plate will go to our mission partners there. One of us will, Jane Ann or I, will offer you a piece of bread. The best way to receive it is with your hands open and your palms upturned so we don't swap germs. We also have gluten-free wafers for those who need them. And we also, the deacons will have a traveling communion tray if you prefer to receive communion in your seat. After the, uh, you receive the bread, one of the deacons will be holding a tray with small glasses of 
grape juice, which is white, and wine, which is red. And then we invite you to take those communion elements back to your seat, and then we'll all partake together. Will you be with me in the spirit of prayer? God, we come to you as a people who are seeking renewal, who are ready for the newness of life, who are ready for an alternative vision to the brokenness of your world. So we come to this table seeking new beginnings, seeking refreshment for body, mind, and spirit. And so we ask you to bless us as we receive these elements. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to come by this place and infuse them with the presence of the risen Christ so that we might carry that presence into your world. Amen. We remember that night when Jesus sat at a Passover table in very tumultuous times. We remember that it was the night before he was betrayed. And still, he took the bread that night, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he shared it around the table, saying, this is now my body, broken for you. My heart broken open for you in God's love as often as you eat this bread together, remember me. And taking the cup, he poured out the Passover wine. Lifted it up, gave thanks for it and blessed it and said, this is now the cup of the new covenant in my life poured out for you, in my blood shed for you, as often as you drink this cup together, remember me. And so we remember together all that Jesus said, and we remember that that night, as tragic as it was, as troublesome as the times, was the beginning, actually, of something new that God was doing. Come, come to Christ's table, for all things are ready. And also, JT will be doing healing prayer. So if there's something in your life that you would like to have JT pray for with you, he'll be just over here on your right. So if you'd like to have healing prayer with JT, it probably helps to get in to the right line.
This is the bread of life. Take and eat. And the cup of salvation for you. Take and drink. Will all who are able please rise for the unison prayer of dedication and thanksgiving? God of resurrection, we offer thanks and praise for the wonder of receiving life, for the gift of creation's elements. May we dedicate our time, talent, and treasure to the love that heals and brings justice. Amen. In John's Gospel, we're told that Jesus leaves peace with all of us. And it's not peace just to make us happy. It's the peace that goes beyond understanding. So will you share that peace, one with another? The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Go with this good news. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Go in the spirit of the creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall go out and draw.
sure springs the hill.